Well, hello, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and today's little talk is about Wave Geometry Linker. I got a request from a uh, very nice person who's um, obviously watching the videos and wanted me to go over Wave Geometry Linker, it, and it could be very confusing, so here we go. Uh, in general, Wave Geometry Linker uh, enables us to access geometry from one file to another in some very logical and um, powerful ways. So, uh, for example, here is a model that I've done, and it's all, as you can see, it's all one uh, dumb body, and what I want to do is make an assembly. So, the first thing I'm going to do is um, say File New, there's my little File button, File New, and I'm going to make an assembly part file, and I'm going to call this Shifter assembly like this uh, assemblies uh, add component here's a uh, shifter handle I only want one of them <laughs> like that and say okay and say okay next um, looking at the assembly structure I have shifter handle as um, I'm going to call it this master model and it is uh, it's it's like uh, a piece of geometry that's going to drive the rest of it. Okay, now in shifter handle, I'm going to let's just hide this here. In shifter handle, I'm going to go to shifter handle and I'm going to put a datum plane uh, right here on this uh, top face, and I'm going to use that datum plane to split the body. So I'm going to go to uh, split body. And here's the overall body, and I'm going to grab this little datum plane and say, okay. So now this is two distinctly different pieces. Okay. What I'll do now, is I'll go back to the assembly and I'm going to make um, another component part file um, in the assembly. So I'll say new component, and I'm gonna call this the top uh, insert, okay. Top insert. I'm going to double click on top insert and I'm going to use the wave geometry linker to borrow, if you will, the geometry of that top insert. And the way to do that is to do home more wave geometry linker. And with wave geometry linker, you can, you can link composite curves, points, datum planes, sketches, faces, regions of bodies, bodies, mirror bodies, routing objects. And what I want is a body. So now, oh, let's look at the settings though. I'm going to do associative, it's an associative copy, and I'm going to um, hide the original, and I'm going to um, inherit, inherit the materials, and I'm also gonna fix it current timestamp. This is very important, fix it current timestamp. Um, uh, and the next thing I'm gonna copy threads, I don't have that now. And so these settings are really important to understand. First of all, associativity what that means is if I change the original model the shifter handle then this top insert that I'm creating will also change with it if I make those changes and then um, fix it current timestamp means if I actually add features to the original model they will not show up in the associate associative copy because if I say fix a current timestamp it means I'm going to associate, I'm going to link everything that you've copied before the next operation, but if I do another operation to the master, I'll call it the master, then that will not be propagated down into the slave, which is the wave geometry link components or the components with wave geometry link entities in them. Okay, so I'm just going to now select on that top emblem and say okay and I'm done. So now I'm going to go back to the assembly and show you that I can turn off the rest, the shifter handle, but I still have the top emblem that I've borrowed and I'm going to go into the top emblem and so I'm going to say open in work part, open in window rather. And so here it is. It is oriented in space exactly where it was oriented relative to the assembly coordinate. So there's the coordinate system. I should say assembly coordinate system. And it's just the piece of geometry that I kind of chopped off the top. 
Now this insert, I'm going to give a bit of a, uh, a bit of a thickness. I'm going to say extrude and I'm going to extrude face edges, these face edges. And I'm just going to extrude this from zero to 0.125. And I'm going to make it look like that. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to make it look like this. I'm going to... Let's make it 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Okay? And I'm going to unite that. Well, I'm just going to say okay. Like that. And then I'm going to unite it after the fact. I'm going to unite this to this piece of geometry. And so now it's actually um, a thickened insert, if you will. Let's say this is something that I machine out of, you know, some like polished stainless steel or what have you, whereas the rest of the shifter has a little indentation. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the assembly, shifter assembly, and I'm going to uh, uh, hide the top insert, and I'm going to go back to the shifter handle, and I'm going to make this its own piece. I'm going to uh, uh, say assemblies, uh, new component, and this is going to be shifter body, and say okay, and say okay. So I have a new part file, a new component, if you will, called shifter body. Incidentally, I'm going to, um, I'm going to put my position column in here. Position. Push it up there. Okay. So you can see that the top insert and the shifter body are free to move in the assembly, and I don't want that. And so I'm going to go to the assembly constraints, and I'm going to um, fix those, um, fix the location of those. Um, so here we go. I'm going to just go to fix, and I'm going to click on the top insert and click on the shifter body. And now, as you can see, they are both fixed. Oops, I forgot the top insert here. Let's click on the top insert there. So everything is fixed. Um, next, I'm going to go to the shifter handle and I'm going to open it in its own little window. And I'm going to uh, hide the top insert piece like that. And I'm going to now extrude it's going to be 0 0.01 and I'm going to do a Boolean subtract. So as you can see, there's a nice little um, indentation hole, if you will, for me to put that top insert in. Good. And now I'm going to uh, create, let's go back to the shifter assembly. I'm going to create a shifter body part. Uh, in order to do that, I double click on shifter body. I go to home more wave geometry linker and I select the body like that and uh, again it's associate hide original um, inherit material uh, here make um, uh, copy threads because there's threads in this one and say okay all right now it didn't hide the original but I'm going to hide the original by doing that um, and so now I have an assembly whoops as you can see, same thing again. I have an assembly that has, um, let's go back here. It has the top insert and it has the shifter body and it actually has the little indentation that I made. Of course, that's way too big, <laughs> way, way too big an indentation. I want to make it smaller. And the beauty of Wave Geometry Linker is now that I have these two pieces, I can go to the shifter body and I can do whatever I want to it independently. And let's do an extrude of this single curve right here. <clears throat> We're going to extrude uh, 0 0.005. We're going to do a two sided offset. And the two-sided offset is going to start at zero, and I want it to 
be closer like that and that's going to be a nun so what I've done is I've made a little a little ring and here I'll show you that if I take the top insert away this little ring is what I've created here and uh, I'm going to unite it in so this is going to unite with that say okay I'm going to give it a little chamfer the little chamfer is going to look like this say okay and now as you can see I have a finished shifter body so there's my shifter body here's my top insert it fits in there very well I'm going to double click on the assembly so you can see let's check the clearances now I'll say control H so there's the interference so I went a little too far with that ring so I'm just going to say okay and I'm going to go back to shifter body and I'm going to edit that extrude and so there there's my clearance between the little emblem and the body say okay so that's the beauty of wave geometry linkers you can basically borrow geometry from one component to another in this very very powerful way when I borrowed the geometry I did it at timestamp so let's explore what that means so here's the top insert and here you can see that's the linked body part and then I did an extrude and a unite okay great that linked body if I edit the parameters and I go into settings you can see that it says fix at current timestamp fix at current timestamp okay so what that means is if I go to the original let's go back to the shifter assembly here if I go to shifter body and I'm going to open that in its own window if I go to this shifter body and bring back the emblem let's say and then I do something to it um, for example I'm going to do a little extrude on this face and I'm going to put a little circle right there and I'm going to extrude that piece of geometry um, uh, let's uh, let's do uh, boolean none okay and then I'm going to subtract this piece of geometry out of the emblem so I say subtract target body tool so now as you can see the emblem has a hole in it and if I look at the uh, part navigator that little extrude and that subtract are at the end of my uh, feature tree so now if I go back to the assembly the question is does that is that reflected in the emblem that I wave geometry linked over and the answer is no if I go back to the assembly and I hide shifter assembly and I take off this section view you can see that the emblem is just fine because that um, extruded feature in the parent of the emblem was um, fixed at current time stamped uh, or the geometry that I borrowed is fixed at current time stamp and that uh, little piece of um, that little hole or that little extrusion occurs after in time and when I say time I don't mean um, uh, watch time I mean in uh, model time after the fact so that is really important fix it current timestamp wave geometry linker it's an incredibly powerful technique that allows you to in many cases and there's more uses for it than, than what I've shown you but in this case I started with like an industrial design that's all in one part file maybe it's some surfaces maybe it's something from some other vendor or whatever and when I want to break it up into the uh, the components that will actually be used to manufacture it 
I can use the wave geometry linker. Um, like I said, there's many other, uh, ne uh, other uses for wave geometry linker, and there's other ways to do it. And um, I've given you the tip of the iceberg. It's incredibly powerful. Um, but please uh, understand it. Give it a try. Um, it's also very, very powerful, and therefore you can get into big trouble with it. Um, the most um, trouble I've seen uh, uh, people have is when they use it too much and they're just got all these external references all over and then they um, have a model that's just too complex for them to understand or they have an assembly that's too complex for them to understand and then they have to redo it and the waves and the links get broken and they're you know working with other people who are changing the uh, the parent file and, and in a way that they don't remember and they didn't do fix it current timestamp I mean there's a lot of ways this is really really powerful there's a lot of ways to go wrong with it and therefore be very, very cautious when you use it. Use it to your great advantage. Again, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. Thanks for your listenership on these. It's quite a privilege. Please uh, like and subscribe and share it with a thousand of your closest friends. <laughs> Take care.